some of y'all established our relationship. And I'm going to just tell you, I'm going to really give you the, I'm going to already give you the answer to a lot of these questions. But let me add this context in there. Some of y'all established the foundation of your relationship based off of a lie in the first place. When you got together, he was never yours. When you met him, you were already in a relationship. And so y'all got together under the guise that y'all actually liked each other, but y'all was finessing each other when y'all first got together in the first place. If you want to get to the core root of whether or not you were in a relationship that you should or shouldn't be with, all you got to do is look at how you guys got together in the first place. If he already had holes when he met you, what makes you think that you was going to get something different from him and that you wasn't just a part of the fleet and a part of the crew from the women that he then established himself from being around in the first place? Why would he do anything different than what it is that he established with you in the first place? You was just a part of the crew. What made you think that you was better than any other other woman that he, women that he was with, except for the idea that you stuck around long enough for him to actually start to like you a little bit more than the rest of them? Y'all got together under duress. Y'all met each other. Bold. He cheated with you from the woman that he was already in a relationship with, and then you expected him to treat you any better than a woman that he left for you. No, it's not going to go well. It's not going to be awesome. Is it the possibility? Of course. It's also a possibility that you hit the Powerball. But how many of you actually know somebody that hit the Powerball? You got together under the guise or under duress in a certain situation or a certain circumstance that was not conducive for your lifestyle. What makes you think it's going to be any different? Regardless of what it is that you decide that you wanted to do or how it is that you decide that you want to change, you're not going to change them. You're not going to make them different. You're not going to have them operating any differently than what it is that you established in the first place. What makes you think it's going to go any better? You need to reset your expectations because if you got together under the rest, that's what your expectation should be. Anything better than that should be a surprise. Anything better than that should be a surprise. If you have children, I think you should stay. If you have children, I think you should say, sit there, work that shit out, figure it out, have the uncomfortable conversation, do some wrangling because y'all brought some people into this world that didn't ask to be here in the first place simply because y'all told each other that y'all loved each other. I don't give a fuck. I don't care. You can't just walk away from your IRS debt obligation. You can't walk away from your student loan debt obligation. You sitting here begging for forgiveness right now. You still tied to that thing. At the end of the day, when you get done complaining and whining, guess what? Fed loan is still going to be waiting for you. Nelnet is still going to be waiting for you. Whoever it is that your, your student loan servicer that you got them through, they still going to be waiting for you. And guess what? When they made you sign that contract, they might as well put in that bitch till death do its part. You tied to that, that student loan for the rest of your fucking life. And you know what the federal government said? Listen, after you get done with all of this moratorium and you get done asking for forgiveness and you get done doing this and that and you voted a certain way and you decided to de defer your student loans, that student go loan going to still be fucking waiting there for you at the end of the day. Like, ha ha, I just had some interest tacked on to it the same way that bitch popped up and was like, ha ha, I just got a couple pounds that's attached to me. It's still going to be waiting for you at the end of the finish line. And the thing that y'all don't understand, and you would approach it a little bit differently, you would approach it a little bit differently if you understood that the woman that you lay next to when you have kids with is the woman that you're marrying anyway. Oh, man, I'm about to get cooking. I hope y'all got y'all seatbelt on today. It's about to get ugly. It's going to get real shabba ranks in this bitch. This ain't the Millionaire Morning Show. This is different. Y'all having the wrong fucking conversation. Let me go ahead and get real with y'all. You having the wrong conversation. Everybody is worried about whether or not you should get divorced. Nobody is actually paying attention to the person that you had kids with. You do know that you're tied to that person for the rest of your life through the child, whether you like it or not, till death do you part. 
even after that child turns 18, even after that child turns 20, even after that child turns, I ran into my uncle the other day, right? I ran into Unc the other day. He not my real Unc, but you know how it is, a dude from the hood that you call Unc. I ran into Unc the other day, right? I was come out of, coming out of the restaurant, and Rita said, wasn't that such and such? Ain't that the guy that you always talk about? I seen a picture of him before, so on and so forth. I said, I didn't see him. So I get in the Porsche, and this is, you know, before I crashed the Porsche, and I get in the Porsche, and he came out the door. He was like, Anton, Anton. And he had to be every bit of 70 years old, 70, 71 years old. OG, triple OG, cool, dope guy. And you know how we knew each other? You know how I know him? You know how I met him? Because his daughters is the same age as me. His oldest daughter is the exact same age as me. Actually, her birthday is two weeks after mine. And his younger daughter is two years younger than me. And you know what the interesting thing about it is? Through his daughters, he still has conversations with his ex-wife. At 70-something years old, kids is about to be 41, 42, 43 years old, and he's still having conversations based off of interactions that he's still having with his ex-wife about coordinating about whatever it is that's going on in his 39 and his 41-year-old daughter's life. He got a whole wife. He done been twice married. She didn't moved on. She got a whole new man and all of this other type of stuff. And guess what? They are still interacting with each other based off of how they're dealing with their kids. They are together in one way or another till death do us part. You know why? Because they had children together. They are never going to be separated. And in some way, shape or form, they're always going to be interconnected one way or another. At the, very, at the minimum, at the minimum, you are still going to have to deal with that woman in some capacity or another. And a lot of y'all just want to deal with them and you're just going to have a bad relationship. Fuck that bitch. A year from now, fuck that bitch. Three years from now, the fuck that bitch came out a little bit lighter because you've had some time to be really be able to think about it. And life been kicking, in your, kicking you in your ass. And so, you, so now you, you, know, you done went to church and you gave your, God, your life over to God. So you like, forget that hoe. <laughs> forget that hoe. Man, that hoe is so evil. I know a guy, literally, who he said that he hated his baby mama so much when, when they had kids. Today. They still cordial and they still got to interact with each other. He wanted to kill that chick when she had it, had that child. And she pulled up. This is what he told me. He said that she pulled up to, you know, whenever it was that they declared child support, that she pulled up in a, in a new car and she said to him, you paying for this. <laughs> 